What up everybody, Instructing Beats back again here with another lesson today. We are looking at the distributive property using arrays to help us understand what it is and how it can help us dominate multiplication. Here is a review problem and if you're at this point already in your math journey, you probably already know this, but here we have an array to help us represent the multiplication equation three times four. So we say three times four, but really what this multiplication sign says is groups of, because we know multiplication is really repeated addition. So here you can see that we have three groups of four, okay? We have three rows with four in each row. You could also rewrite this and draw your array like this, which isn't nearly as impressive when I do with the pen, but you can still see that you have three groups of four. You have three columns with four in each, right? So when you're first learning multiplication, that was the key point, okay? When you draw this out, you have three groups of four, and yes, you could count them up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and get the answer as 12, right? Or you could recognize that and use your skip counting, your repeated addition. Three groups of four is four plus four plus four, which is also 12. You could do four groups of three here, okay? Now that'd be a different multiplication equation. It's gonna give you the same answer, right? But now we have four groups of, right, three. But again, the total in our array is 12. Because it's repeated addition, we can add it up any way we want as long as we come to the total. It just helps us to do skip counting or eventually learn our basic facts instead of counting one by one. Why does that help us? Because what happens if we have a bigger array? So right here we have 15 times four. We have 15 groups of four. It's gonna be very important that you know what that multiplication sign says. So here you can see we have 15 columns and we have four in each of my columns. Now, to figure out the total, figure out the product of this multiplication equation that we're representing with this array, we could count by ones. We could count each dot, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 20, all the way up to the total. Or we could skip count by four, right? We could say four plus four plus four plus four plus four plus four, and we could do that 15 times. Now, some of you may be able to do that. But what's a quicker way to solve this problem if we don't want to skip count by fours that many times and if we don't want to count one by one? Well, what we can do and what, what we can use is called the distributive property. It means we can actually break apart our groups because really all we're trying to do is figure out the total. We're going to add all the dots together to tell me the product. So instead of having 15 groups of four, I'm going to split this apart now into 10 groups of four here on my left and five groups of four here on my right. And now I can use my basic facts. I know 10 times four is 40. So in this section that I just split apart, I have 40 total dots. And I know my basic facts, five groups of four gives me 20 over here. And you can pause the video and count them one by one if you don't trust me. But I have 20 in this section over here which means if I put the total back together, I have 40 plus 20, which gives me a product of 60. So that's kind of an animation to help us understand that all we're trying to do is figure out the total so we can actually break apart our equal groups to make the sections a little bit easier for us to use our basic facts to solve. Let's go to the whiteboard and take a little bit closer look at what we just did in our math chamber of awesomeness, right? So here I have the same array, except it's made the dots black. I have 15 groups of four, right? Here's one group and I have four in each group, okay? So I have 15 of these, but you know, I don't know my 15 facts. So all we did was we took 10 of the groups and I'll change the color so you can see it right here. And all I did is I just made 10 groups of four right here, right? You can see I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 groups with four in each. And then I have my other five groups, right? So I have five groups of four here. And all I'm doing is I'm solving. I didn't change the total. I just split apart my array 
into two different groups that I can use my basic facts to find how many circles I have in a little bit easier, right? So I split it apart and that's what the distributive property allows us to do. So now we can do 10 times four, right? And just like we said, we have 40 here. Five times four means I have 20 in this array. I add them together and it gives me my product of 60. So when I put it back together, 15 groups of four is 60, all right? So this is what's conceptually happening when you are doing the distributive property. Now, what does that look like with math? So a lot of times what you'll see here is you'll split this apart. You'll split the 15 groups into 10 groups of four and you might see it written with parentheses. And then you're gonna add that together with your other five groups of four. And you'll put that in parentheses. And the reason it's in parentheses is because we wanna find 10 times four and five times four first, and then add them together. So then 10 groups of four was 40, five groups of four is 20. And when we bring it back together, we still get the product of 60. So here's what it looks like conceptually. Here's what you saw the animation of splitting the array apart. And then here's what it looks like mathematically. Got my arrow right there, all right? So let's take a look at another I do problem so you can see how I do it a little bit quicker. All right, so for my I do problem, I have a basic fact, it's nine times five, and I know a lot of you guys probably already know that, but if you don't, then let me show you how we can solve it with the distributive property. And if you do, this will be a good example because you already know that nine groups of five gives us 45. So you know the total of whatever array I'm about to show you will be 45. So let's pull up the distributive property video of awesomeness. And here I have my array. So you can see right here, right, that I have nine groups of five. You can see all my columns. I have nine columns with five in each. And if you didn't know nine times five, let's break our nine apart into something that we do know. So here, let me change the colors first. And here you can see that I have split this apart to make it a little bit easier. Again, the total didn't change, right? I still have the same total. I just split the equal groups into more manageable chunks. So instead of having nine groups of five, now I have four groups of five and five groups of five. And I know those basic facts. So this is gonna be a lot quicker for me to solve. All right, so back to the whiteboard so I can actually write on this. So we have our four groups of five. And when we count those up, four times five is 20. Okay, you can count them one by one if you like, but knowing your basic facts makes this quicker. Five times five is 25. And so when we bring them back together, because again, remember, we're not changing the total. Distributive properties just let me split my groups to make it a little bit easier. I have 45. Okay, so if you notice though, when you split your groups, my groups stay even. I still have five in each, okay? I'm not splitting and putting nine here and four here and three here, right? I'm splitting my nine groups into four groups of five each and five groups of five each. Remember, multiplication is equal groups. So you can't change how much is in each group because then it's not repeated addition. It's not the same thing over and over and over again. So what does this look like mathematically, right? A lot of times you'll see parentheses. So all we're doing here is we're splitting our nine into four groups of five each, right? And then I added to that, if I had nine, I took out four of those groups, which I did right here. Then my second group right here was five groups, right? Of five in each. And then when you add that together, right, of course you get that. And if you put it back together, you're gonna have the same total. Again, using the distributive property of multiplication to make multiplying bigger numbers a little bit easier. All right, so let's do a we do problem together, okay? So this should be in your notes. If you haven't gotten your notes yet, you can check in the uh, description of our video. We have a link um, to notes that you can copy, print off, or just take online. So here we have 20 groups of eight. Okay, so here's what our array would look like right here. Ooh, that's a big array. I have 20 columns with eight in each column. And I wanna split that apart. So you can actually split it apart any way you'd like. You could split it apart here and do two groups of eight and then do 18 groups of eight. You could split it apart here and have 16 groups of eight on the left and four groups of eight on the right and then add those back together, right? Doesn't matter where you split the groups at as long as you have the same amount in each group, okay? Now, where you split it is gonna be based on your basic fact knowledge or what makes it easier. So for this one, I see that I could split 20 pretty evenly right here 
into 10 groups of eight and 10 groups of eight. That to me makes the most sense. So here I have 10 columns with eight in each, right? Or 10 groups of eight. And then I'm going to uh, add that to my other 10 groups of eight. Again, using my distributive property to break apart this bigger multiplication problem using repeated addition, right? Using my addition knowledge, okay? We, we, we wanna continue to talk about why this works, not just the steps to do it, right? So now if I count all these one by one or just skip count and do 10 groups of eight, I'm gonna get 80 here. Again, that'd be the same over here then. So 80 plus 80 is going to be 160. And so the product of 20 times eight or 20 groups of eight is going to be 160. If you counted them all up one by one, the entire array would have 160. Instead, we're using our distributive property knowledge to split my 20 into 10 groups and then 10 groups of eight, again with parentheses, more than likely, and then 10 groups of eight over here. And when you add up 80 plus 80, of course you get 160. So using my distributive property to allow myself to use basic fact knowledge and make multiplying bigger numbers a lot easier. All right, here's our you try problem. If you're new to Instructive Beats, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pause the video. You can solve this using your distributive property knowledge. Um, you may split it in a different place than I'm going to split it in, and that's okay. But we'll talk about that as we solve it. So go ahead and pause the video, solve it, and then push play to see how you did. All right, so hopefully you have paused the video, you've already solved it. Let's go through it and check your work. If it's okay to fail as long as you learn from it. So if you don't get it right, or if you did something incorrect, learn from it and get better every single time you do a problem, right? So here I have 14 groups of three. I don't know my 14 facts. Um, and you could have split this a couple different ways, okay? Some of you might have split it right in half and done seven groups of three and seven groups of three because you know your seven facts and got 21 plus 21. And you could see that the product or the total amount in this array is going to be 42, okay? So that's the perfect way to do it. I probably would have went ahead and split it because I like multiplying by anything with by tens because I think it's easy. I would have done 10 groups of three here and then added four groups of three here just to make it a little bit easier. But again, if you do it this way, you're going to get the same answer because I have 30 circles in this part of my array or this section of my array. I have 12 circles in this section of my array. When I bring it back together, I still have a total or a product of 42. So however you split it, right, is fine as long as you kept equal groups, right? Three in each group. Which leads us into our key takeaway. The distributive property tells us we can break the big group or the big array into smaller equal groups to help us as long as we add them back together at the end. Thank you so much for checking us out today. We know there's lots of different options online. Check out our distributive property song if you wanna hear a catchy way to remember the distributive property. We'd love to have you check that out. Please like, comment, subscribe. Let us know where you're watching from. Again, thank you so much. Instructor Beats, out.